The next time you visit the supermarket, take into account the amount of single-use plastics. Single-use plastics are everywhere in our everyday lives. Plastic consumption has quadrupled over the past 30 years, and you might be thinking, but hey, I recycle. Well, it is estimated that only 9% of total plastics are recycled. The rest are either incinerated or end up in our landfills, through our rivers, and eventually our oceans. So what sort of implications does this have on sea turtles? Although the seven different species of sea turtles differ in many ways, one food source that is common among all species is the jellyfish. A plastic bag floating in the ocean also resembles this food source. However, research shows that sea turtles may be attracted to not only the appearance of the debris, but also the way it smells, from the buildup of algae and different bacteria. One study found that 83% of the juveniles tested off the North Atlantic had ingested marine debris. The prevalence of this marine debris ingested increased with the size of the sea turtle. Another study found that sea turtles faced a 50% probability of mortality if more than 14 pieces of plastics were found in their digestive system. If entangled, sea turtles face the risk of serious wounds or it could be fatal. Sadly, in this study, of the turtles documented as entangled, over 90% were deceased. Ghost gear or abandoned fishing gear contributed to the majority of the entanglements. In the ocean, consumption and entanglement pose a severe threat to sea turtles. More and more sea turtle patients admitted to the hospital have been found to have ingested plastic, whether that is the primary reason for their admittance or not. Thankfully for the high level of care given at the sea turtle hospitals by dedicated staff and volunteers, many turtles can be released. But what about the impacts of plastic to sea turtles on land? Plastic is pushed around from the currents and tides making its way onto beaches. Plastic can be an obstacle to hatchlings trying to make their way to the ocean or to adults attempting to nest. Plastics break down into smaller and smaller fragments called microplastics. One study found that microplastics can influence sand temperature and its permeability, having an impact on hatchling fitness, sexual development, and nest productivity. Sea turtles are marine reptiles, so they have temperature-dependent sex determination. The warmer the temperature during incubation will produce females, and the cooler temperature will produce males. Now it's not just a 50-50 split. The pivotal temperature is around 29 degrees Celsius. The ratio of females to males could be heavily skewed, having consequences on their reproduction in the future. Another study tested seven different loggerhead nest sites along the northwest coast of Florida. Microplastics were discovered in unviable eggs at each of the seven different sites. We are still learning and researching more into the effects plastic waste can have on sea turtles, but it is evident there can be impacts both in the water and on land. Although this problem is bigger than just consumers alone, it is important for us to look at our own use and determine ways we can improve. Stay tuned for a video next week where I dive into my own plastic use as a sea turtle biologist and what I'm going to do to tackle it. So let's start brainstorming. What are ways that we can reduce our plastic use? Let's start the conversation down in the comments below. Subscribe to join this turtly awesome community and I will see you next time.